Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Alpha, Beta and Gamma radiation. This topic was suggested by Youssef Bilal. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, leave a message in the comments below. Alpha, beta and gamma radiation are the three types of nuclear radiation which you need to know about. And you need to know a little bit about how they interact with matter and how they're used. But first we need to think a little bit about what matter is like. So I want you to imagine this colander representing matter. Atoms are fairly tightly packed but there are gaps between them and radiation can pass through them and this is what this is going to represent. It's a pretty simple way of thinking about things but it's all you need to worry about. So this represents our matter, this represents our tightly packed atoms. Uh, the denser the matter, so if you've got something like lead for example which is really dense, the smaller the holes because those atoms are much more tightly packed. If you've got something like a gas then you'd have much much bigger holes. If you can think of this as representing matter, then it starts to become easy to understand your three different types of radiation. So let's take each one of those in turn. First is alpha radiation. Now alpha radiation is the biggest and the heaviest of all three. It's a helium nucleus basically, it's two protons and two neutrons. For the sake of my demonstration, I'm going to represent it with this cabbage. Now that might seem like a fairly silly example and a fairly silly way to think about it but actually for the size it's not too bad because when an alpha particle hits the matter that matter tends to stop it quite effectively. Uh, the cabbage is way too big to fit through any of the holes here. You would need matter which was much less dense so that it was able to fit through. Or else, if this was going really, really fast, then potentially the other option is that it could smack into this so hard that it could damage it. We call that ionization, and that's how radiation ends up damaging things, particularly living tissues, and most importantly, DNA. Damage to DNA can cause things like cancer. But basically, what you need to remember, alpha particles, quite big, quite heavy, comparatively slow moving, at least compared to the other two types of radiation, and when they hit matter, they're not going to go through it because they're so big most of the time. So alpha particles are big compared to the other two types of radiation and they've got a lot of mass compared to the other two types of radiation when they smack into things that they can do an awful lot of damage but they don't manage to pass through matter very easily. Beta particles are much smaller, they're electrons, they're very very fast moving electrons which are emitted from the nucleus of an atom and move at incredibly high speeds. To represent the much smaller beta particles passing through our model matter, I'm actually going to use grains of rice. Now as I tip these into my colander here, we get some of them stopping, some of them going through. Not all of them are going to be stopped. Some of them will pass through the holes, some of them are small enough, but some of them are stopped. So beta particles are more deeply penetrating than alpha particles, but because they're so much smaller, they don't tend to be as strongly ionizing. Finally, to represent gamma radiation, I'm going to use water. So as I tip the water through here, of course, it all pretty much goes straight through. Very, very difficult to stop gamma radiation. Of course, if we look closely at this, there is still a little bit of water that's been trapped. It's not completely dry, it is still a little bit wet, so we've managed to stop a tiny, tiny bit of the gamma radiation, but not an awful lot. If you imagine stacking lots and lots of these colanders inside one another and we got in effect a much thicker piece of matter then we'd be able to stop more of it but it's still quite difficult to stop. If you think back to the electromagnetic spectrum, gamma radiation is the very very high frequency electromagnetic radiation at the very far end of the electromagnetic spectrum. It carries a lot of energy but it passes through matter much more easily than alpha and beta radiation and it's the least strongly ionizing. It causes the least damage to the matter which it passes through. Alpha particles, because they're effectively an atomic nucleus, they've got two protons, they have a positive charge and they can be deflected by electromagnetic fields. Beta particles have an opposite charge because they're electrons and so they can also be deflected by electromagnetic fields but they'll be deflected in the opposite direction because they have the opposite charge. Gamma radiation has no charge and no mass and so it won't be deflected by electromagnetic fields at all. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood then try the snap quiz. The link is right here and it'll also be in the description along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. 
If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.